Hi everybody. Okay, so this is a fly by the seat of my pants and a last minute video. So I didn't really have a lot of time to think through everything um, as usual with a fly by the seat of my pants video, but um, I'm just gonna put it all up there, all my mistakes, um, my calculations that were wrong, but I worked it out anyway and I'm happy with the result. So basically I had a pair of flared pants and I wanted to make a pair of shorts because it was really hot. And now that I'm going to visit my daughter, I didn't want just like raggedy shorts I could wear around the property because people will see me and um, on the property, no one sees me. So I figured I should do this right. <laughs> so um, I don't have footage of when I whacked the pants off, but I decided when I took it from raggedy shorts to like proper shorts, I wanted to record it. So you're gonna see all the mistakes um, how I fixed it, how I work around things, and I hope you guys like this video. Um, I hope there are parts that you can say, oh, I learned what to do, and you learn what not to do. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, and if you'd like to see more videos on alterations, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to hit the bell so that you are notified when I upload more videos. Thanks. <laughs>visit my daughter and I wanted to make sure I had some proper shorts to wear so I'm altering these so that's the whole thing about the thumbnail so first of all let me show you some can you hear this there's something in the waistband that doesn't sound right I'm anxious to find out what this is so anyway um, I put my shorts on and they're they kind of fit like in the body area right here but they're big in the legs and big in the waist so I'm just going to try and figure this out. So I put them on and this is right above my knee. So this is where I want them. And then I reached around the back. I use this as the center. And this is, this is how much I need to pinch out right here where that mark is. And then I reached down and I went down to where I could no longer pinch out this uh, seam. So here fits pretty good. This right here, I'm going to use this as this stopping point. I'm going to taper from here all the way down to here. So I'm going to do a time lapse. I'm just going to hurry up and get the belt loops off. This one here, I'm going to open this up, take out the top stitching, sew it down. I'll probably take this top stitching out all the way down. I'm not sure if I'm going to put them back because I don't have top stitching thread the same color. So I might just use it to make it a regular seam. And then I'm going to... Um, I will probably take up a little bit here and here and just taper up to this point just so the legs are a little more fitted but not tight. So let's get started. Okay, <laughs> this looks like tape. I'm not sure why they would put tape in the waistband but it's sticky one side. It looks like packing tape. If anybody's in the industry and knows why, I think this is Liz Claiborne, would put tape in the waistband. Yeah, feel free to leave a comment. This is bizarre. I've never seen this before. <laughs> I was thinking, you know, oh, maybe this is one of those things where if you get your, if you wet your shorts or something, like put water on them, then it keeps the waistband cool or, you know, some kind of something like that. But I never expected tape. Anyway, let's get back to this. Okay, now that I got that off, this is what it looks like. Um, I'm not going to claim that this is gonna look perfect, but um, I'm gonna do the best I can. So I'm going to just start taking it. Now, because they have this, I might, because you have a dark line here, and I don't know if I want that on the back of my pants, I might just take it up further down where it won't be seen. So I'm gonna start here 
and just come down like this and I might yeah I might just try to bring it all the way down even if it's just enough to hide this area we'll see we'll see um I'm not I don't really have a lot of time to think it through I'm again flying by the seat of my pants or I might do a top stitch I'm actually doing the video and I haven't decided everything so there you go okay um I went ahead and did a kind of a basic chalk line and I'm just going to follow it here Now, you can see how close I'm getting to the pockets. This is something I may be concerned about, but because I don't tuck my shirts in, I don't have to worry too much about that. Okay, well, that was messed up. I forgot to turn the phone on, uh, the camera on when I <laughs> first did this. Before I cut it, I just basically laid this out like this, saw where I needed to cut. I cut it, I pulled this aside, and I'm lining up the center back seam, and I put a chalk mark here, and then I did the same with the other side, and then I flipped it over and made the chalk mark on this side. Now what I have to do is take out the top stitching up here because if I try to sew it together and, and this is the top stitching still there, it's going to leave a lump and it won't lay properly. So I'm going to take that out and then we'll take this like this, matching up the chalk marks. We'll open this up all the way and we'll sew along the chalk marks all the way down. Again, there's more of that tape. I don't understand why that's in there. It's kind of annoying because I can hear it when I pick up my shorts. Anyway, so that's how you do that. Let me get this all situated and I'll be okay, back. Okay, so I took the top stitching out and I found that it's actually assembled with the top stitching. So when I took the top stitching out, the whole waistband came apart. So what I'm going to do is... Um, Mark this at a half an inch. I'm gonna give it a half inch uh, seam allowance because that's my new seam right there. And then I'm gonna cut that, then I'm gonna cut the other side. That way it's easier to put together. I just know I have to match up the raw edges and then so a half inch in from that. This is pretty much right on it. So this one I'll just clean up. So I am going to turn this right sides together. I'm going to sew along that crease so that um, I don't have to sew four pieces together. Although I don't know that it makes much difference whether I sew it one than the other. Um, and then I'll sew them to this. Okay, for the sake of clarification, I'm going to call this the front of the waistband and I'm gonna call that the back of the waistband. Now I was thinking about sewing this as one part and this as another part uh, and then sew them together. But I think I'm gonna stick with uh, Lizzie Girl's way of doing it. I am going to sew these together, the fronts of them together, and then I'm gonna sew the backs of them together. And then I will sew them down and do the top stitching. Let's hope that works. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is make sure, I'm gonna sew the back waistbands together first. And the things that are most important when sewing, the, sewing these back together is making sure that these creases line up. And I have found that the best way to do that 
is line up those creases and pin in the crease. That way they're pinned together and they can't shift. So then you can turn around, look at this and you can see it's a little off. So we are going to try it again. And so my thumb is about where my thumb is about where the stitching line will be. So let's look in here and make sure that that's matched up. <laughs> this is sometimes it's it's easy to get, sometimes not so much. We just keep trying till we get it right. Okay, that's good. And then we're going to remember that we're sewing at half an inch. <laughs> see how I did. That looks good. That looks good. Okay. Um, I am going to do the rest off camera. Okay. Before I sew the waistband down, I'm going to trim this off. I'm not going to change the thread on my serger and get it up here. So I will just use probably a zigzag or something from this machine just to finish the edges so I don't have threads where I don't want threads I'm getting into places where I do not want them. Okay, when I'm choosing um, a stitch to finish the edges, a lot of people use zigzag and sometimes I do, um, but you know the raw edge is gonna be on your right. So I usually use something like this. So you'll have the stitching line and then you go over and grab. So that's what I'm going to use on mine. So when you do it and you're not used to it, you could either do it on a sample piece of fabric or just kind of go um, start back here and see where the, needles, the needle lands. So it goes four straight and then a zigzag. See, and that's how I want it, where it just goes off the fabric. I don't want it too far off. So what I'm doing, my cutting isn't really straight. So I watch where the raw edge ends up on the under the presser foot. And I try to watch that line to make sure it's in the same place so that the needle hits the same place every time. And here's a thick area, so I have to go slow. And that's what it looks like. Now, people, some people might disagree with this one, but this is what I use. And this is what I like. Okay. I have my... Um, machine back on a straight stitch and I pressed the back of my shorts really well and then also the waistband but you can see it's still two separate pieces so I'm going to stitch across the top and then I'm going to attempt to stitch across the bottom catching the front and the back in the same stitch so that I can not have to do it twice because when I sew for myself this is just how I do it. So if this is a little offset, I will make mine offset. I'm not going to try and correct that. Let's find out where it ends. And again, I don't have the thread to match. And on the thicker areas, be sure to go slow. hesitated and that's why you go slow so you don't break your needle um, and also try not to pull or push your fabric through if you guys saw my last short video <laughs> you know I made a bag and I did a lot of this hand turning to get over thick areas in the leather okay 
So there's the top. Now I'm going to do the bottom. I, I might pin it just to make sure that I don't have to go over it twice. Putting the belt loop back on. I'm just putting it back on the way that I took it off. This is not normally how I do it, but this is how this designer does it. Okay, so I pinned it in place. I'm hoping it'll work. Um, it's adding another level of thickness or a couple layers of thickness in here. So I will probably have to do some hand cranking just to make sure I don't break another needle. And what happens is when there are so many layers of, of fabric that you're sewing through, your needle can go in here and then and bend and then hit the, um, what do you call it, the needle plate and will break your needle. So that's why I try to go slow um, in hopes that I can prevent that. So I want to show you guys this, this little device that, um, this one is called a seam buster, but I've also owned one that was called a Genoma jig. And this is what it looks like. And what you do is you lift your presser foot up, slide this under here, because a lot of times what happens is your, um, presser foot when it's going through and the needle's here it'll bend this way or this way and that needle will hit the the actual presser foot so if you have this under here you put the knot the the thickest part um right in this hole right here it's the thickest part is right here it keeps your presser foot flat so that it goes over easily so you can see how it's going to come off the back and it's going to come right onto the top so it'll keep it flat. Let me make sure my presser fits down. So it just makes it so much easier. And I'll leave a link in the description box for this device. And then because it has an opening here, you can just come and sew right off of it. you can see that it caught all the belt loop, the belt, uh, waistband on the back. Okay, before I start with my um, side seams, I just want to mark my new length. And the same way it works with a shirt is the way, I feel like it works with the pants. So when you're drafting pants, you have to have a straight grain on the front so we're just going to do this that's going to be kind of hard to do with that side seam getting in the way And I don't know if you guys know this, maybe, I don't know if it's still true, but when I was buying my tools and stuff for my sewing, I got this at one of the home improvement stores because I find that they're cheaper than if you buy the sewing version. The sewing ones are lighter, and so this is kind of heavy, but it was cheaper if you buy it there. Just like if you were to buy an organizer for all your stuff, you're going to pay more at a craft store than you would if you went to a home um, improvement store. So just thought I'd tell you, this is a two inch. 
I'm going to mark this at two inches and that way I can do a one and a half inch seam and fold it up a half or I can fold it up one inch and then um, have a one inch. I didn't do a very good job when I whacked my shorts off. <laughs> I didn't even care if they were straight. I just had to get something cool on. Okay. That's approximate. Okay, now I'm going to just, I put these on and I kind of, I don't want to say eyeball because I actually did pinch out what I wanted to take out. I just didn't mark it. Um, I'm going to take an inch out here and then it's going to taper up to the hip because right now they look like they kind of flare out. You know what? I think I'm going to do three quarters of an inch. So three quarters, it's going to go up two inches. We want this to be the same uh, width across because then we're going to have puckering if we don't. And then we'll try to just blend it out to the hip. That looks good. Do I want to take up this oh. two inches? I think I'm going to do a half inch here. Nope, I'll do an inch from that seam. Taper it up. And I'll do the same on the other side. Okay, so I did the first leg and it I'm pleased with the outcome. So I'm going to do the second leg for you guys so you can see what I did. Let me make sure I sew on the right seam. Looks like my marks weren't correct. Well, that's weird. Okay, I decided I was going to take up the inseam. I wasn't sure if I wanted to because time is an issue, but then I realized that the inseam is really tapered. So I wanted to make sure that if I'm going to be able to hem this up, that it's going to be the same um, width at the bottom as it is, you know, two inches up. So um, here's my two inch mark. So it's going to be like this, or I could do like this, and it's going to be the same width. So I'm going to taper this. Okay, so it's two inches here. And then from that mark, I tapered it up to the, the crotch seam where I'm not taking any more up. Because um, if you taper the legs up here, it pulls the crotch of the pants closer up to your body. So... Um, if you take up in this way, it's going to pull that uh, crotch seam way up. And if you don't need it to be up higher, 
then you probably will not like what it feels like. So here we're going to go two inches up from the bottom. Sorry. Two inches up from the body and then one inch in. And now I measured this before I took the seams out. So this is one and five eighths inches in from the raw edge. So I need to make sure that, sorry, it's different. One. Okay. So two inches up by one and five eighths inch. So there's the mark. And then this, gosh, I hope I got that right. Is going to be tapered from this mark here up to the crotch and I'm not I may just kind of make it more rounded seam than a straight we'll see how it goes okay now I'm not doing it up to here because I believe that is the top stitch uh, stitching line it's st it's going to be stitched here and that's where it would have been top stitch there so I will just pin these together right sides together and I will start here come all the way up and back down so let me just make sure I don't make a mistake here I forgot to take the chalk line all the way down to the hem and I don't want to confuse myself. Okay, so there it is. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to get my pins, pin it all together, get my machine up here and then sew it. Okay, now I'm going to um, try these on, make sure the fit is right, and then when it is, um, if it is, I'll go ahead and uh, clean the edges up, trim it, and then do my little um, zigzag stitch or whatever, and then, then I will hem it up. Okay, so I tried my shorts on, and I folded them up where the hem was, and I did not like that length. So, but what I did was I, after I folded it up, I tried it on, I didn't like the link. So I folded it up again, like a cuff. And I think that looks a lot better. So I am just going to hem it like normal and then have it awkward. And then I am going to cuff my shorts and then I will stitch the side seams, uh, press it really good. So hopefully it won't come down and leave it at that. And I think I'll be happy with it. So I am, um, when I fold it up to hem it, I am not going to do the double fold like I thought about. I'm going to serge the edges, fold it up once, sew it down, and then I can make that cuff as large or small as I want. So that's what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. 